Hello people, welcome back to my series on building a virtual machine in C++. Last time we built a Lexer and there is actually a few uh, mistakes um, in that Lexer, but if you look in the um, link to the code in the description down below, you'll be able to find the correct code for it. And if you remember, we were working on uh, SASM or the stack assembler. And so we have this Lexer written. Now what we need to do is we need to write uh, the stack assembler to use uh, this Lexer. So let's go ahead and create a file called sasm.cpp. And we'll go ahead and start writing uh, the actual assembler. And so what we'll do is we'll include a few files first. IOStream, we're going to include uh, fstream and include um, uh, we're going to include our lexer file that we had. We're also going to create a, do a type def uh, for uint 32 um, and make that i32 just to have a nice shortcut and we're also going to use uh, namespace, the standard namespace, just to make things a little bit um, easier to write. So the functions that we're going to have are, let's see, they're going to be, we're going to have a compile to instructions, which is going to take a vector of i32. take um, vector of strings and we'll also we, we will need a function called is integer and a function called is primitive and the is primitive function will actually tell us whether something is a primitive uh, function or a uh, or a uh, defined function, and actually we probably won't need this to begin with, but we'll we'll put this here anyway. And uh, the other one, the very important one, is called map to number, and this function will take in a string, and it will it will map that uh, instruction to a uh, a number, which will be the binary output that we'll have. So let's go ahead and create a, the main function. And our main function will actually um, use the command line arguments. So we're going to check for input errors. We're going to check for input errors first, and we'll do that by checking if argc uh, does not equal 2, and we'll print out an error message. If it's not, Then we can go ahead and read the input file, which will create an if, uh, if stream. And we'll open up the file. And file dot open. And we'll open it with the first argument, first command line argument. And then we'll check if infile was able to open successfully.
if it wasn't, we will print an error. And we'll exit. Now what we'll do is we'll create a create a variable called line and we'll start to read the output of the file. So we'll get the contents and then we'll read this file line by line. So we'll use get line for that. We'll read We'll read into line, and then what we'll do is we'll do contents will be the line plus a new line. Then what we'll do <clears throat> is we'll close the file because we're done reading with reading it. Now we get to parse the file. And for that, we'll use our new Lexer that we built. And we will gather up our Lexemes by lexing the contents that we read from the file. Let me look at my notes here. Then after we've done that, we can uh, compile uh, those lexemes to binary. And we do that by creating a variable of uh, vector i32, or 32-bit integers, and we'll call it instructions. And we'll compile to instructions our lexemes and now we can write our uh, binary instructions to a binary file and for that we'll create an uh, OF stream of an out file We'll open our out file. We'll call it out.bin. And we'll make sure that it's a binary file. And then what we'll do is we'll loop we'll loop through each one of our instructions. And we will just write them out to the file. Let's see, after we're done with that, we can close our file. And we're done with our main function. We'll return zero. Whoops. Let's open that up. Go down to the bottom. <clears throat> so now that we have our function created, all we have to do is write our other functions that we need are supporting functions like compile to instructions and uh, and that'll be about it I think so let's let's print uh, let's do that vector i32 compile to instructions and we'll take strings and what we'll do with that is 
create a vector called instructions and we'll go create a little loop here so for the size of our our uh, uh, list of strings of our instructions what we're going to do is we're going to loop through that loop through each one of our string instructions and we'll check if it is an integer and if it is we'll push it onto the instruction list and we'll turn our string into an integer oh, otherwise what we'll do is we'll create an instruction and we'll do a map to number there we go I think we got that right map to number, yep and then what we'll need to do is we need to check if our instruction if it doesn't equal negative one then we can push our instruction otherwise we'll say that we have an invalid instruction Let's print that instruction out just to let people know what's going on. Then, let's see, then what we can do is just return, whoops, return our instructions. Now, what we need to do is we need to write our other helper function. So let's create our is integer. We'll take a string. And we'll loop through loop through every digit or character in our string and we'll check if it is not a digit if it's not a digit we'll return false because it's not an integer otherwise we'll return true and that's it for, oh, whoops, let's see here, otherwise we'll return true. And that's it for that function. Now we'll create a function, let's see, actually, do we need is primitive? Let's, let's create it anyway. Let's create is primitive. I don't think we'll need it right now, but uh, in the future we'll need it. Well, let's see. Actually, let's just create map to number. That'll make, that'll make things a little bit shorter. Okay. Map to number takes 
a string and returns a 32-bit integer. So we'll check and see if, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to check for the command that we're we're looking for. So let's just do let's let's create let's create lots of them. So if if our string is a plus, we'll return uh, a hex number and. See one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good, that's thirty thirty-two bits. And else if s equals minus, we get some of the basic basic operations here. We'll do return make that two. S equals multiply make that three. We'll have divide this four and I think that will be good for now um, and let's also at the end if it's not found in any of this list let's return negative one because this will be um, an invalid instruction all right so now we actually have a our SASM, a very primitive and uh, assembler, but we have an assembler. And let's let's try it out. Let's let's create a um, let's actually create a, a, a file for our assembler. Let's create test.sasm. And what we'll do is we'll put a number on there, we'll put three, put four, we'll add Put two, multiply. Let's see, that'll be seven. That'll be fourteen. And then um, sixteen. So let's let's add two to that, and then we will also divide by four. There we go. So that's a nice little program where you've got doing got some math. So <clears throat> let's uh, let's see if we can uh, compile our SASM. So we'll do um, oh you know what? Let's create um, actually we need to create a make file for this. So and our time is running long. So what we'll do is next time we'll actually make a make file for this program. We'll compile it We'll run it. We'll debug it if there are any if there are any bugs, and then after that we'll work on uh, taking our program that we compile into a binary file and run it on our virtual machine. So thanks for listening, guys. Uh, Till next time. Have a great week.